basically it's I always tell myself it's all about love you know if you really love something you will do anything if this love is not so serious <laughs> then you know you will that's, just let it go and that's find a good something else, that's which, a good way to explain just, it's what we see and it's there's absolutely nothing personal involved you yeah. see it's just yeah. really does this student have the love or not yep. and then time will tell yep. you see so so there's really no need to and sometimes there are students who have the love and who they persevere and it takes them a really long time to go from one lesson to the next one and you see them for years um you know, I, I, I've seen students in Istanbul who got their jazz after, I don't know, 15 years, you mm. know, but they persevered through all, through the whole mashallah. process, you know, mm. so mashallah, I mean, that's also beautiful yes, to see it that is, it perseverance. Is. It yeah. is. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> all right. So did, did your parents have to do anything with this? Are one of them in this or? No, no, no nothing. nothing. No, no, nothing. Okay, oh. <laughs> totally different professions, huh? <laughs> yes, yes, okay. yes. Okay, and your parents are there in uh, Spain. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Do you have any other siblings who do this or no? No, 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 no. No. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's move on from there. Um, so, as I can see from your talk, there is no specific age. Also, can you do it at uh, middle ages that you can pick up on this uh, to learn and? Uh, uh, well, whether again, you choose uh, uh, for I think music is uh, music is a, any yeah. sort of classical art is a good parallel to be able to understand calligraphy okay. meaning music mm -hmm. are you able to become a great master violinist after the age of 30 mm -hmm. maybe mm. but if you start when you're young more, more. probably so mm. no so um, but there's no hard rule because I, I have students who are older who, who are very talented and mm -hmm. And I can see that they can definitely. What is know, the age get very group? Fun. What is older for you? <laughs> it depends. <laughs> I have students who start when they're fifty. Oh, okay. You see, okay. I have students who start when they're twenty. I have mm. students who start. You see, so it, it varies okay. enormously. But it's also a question of: Are you doing calligraphy for yourself to be able to just produce pieces, or are you doing calligraphy to compete at an international level oh, okay. and become a professional calligrapher? Mm -hmm. No, no, all over. Mm -hmm. You know, it depends mm -hmm. on the goal. What you want. Yes. And I always say that the goal is neither of these. The goal is just to practice calligraphy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not to hang something on your wall. It's just to to be able to practice calligraphy, and mm -hmm. that you can do at any age. Mm -hmm. um, you see. Thank you. So, <laughs> uh, so you like? Do you ever get tired of doing the work? No, 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 no. So that means you are in love with the work. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's very good. Very good. There's a very famous Turkish saying um, that says, uh, Ash kol madan mesh kol mas. Without mm -hmm. love, and they use the word ash, meaning intense ish. love. Yes. Ish. There's no, no mesh, no lesson. So mm -hmm. really this love is something that is developed very early on. When you're, you know, when you're repeating the lessons, many, many times, you know, hundreds of times and, and writing every letter millions of times. It's something that is developed and that becomes part of you. So I, I cannot conceive of getting tired of calligraphy after so long. Do you see what I mean? This is something that it's sort of a seed that is planted at the very beginning. You really have to nurture it. The beginning years are very important. And I always see this with my students, you know, it's that is the moment where you see whether the seed is really like well rooted, and and you have this, this really the, the, this desire, you know, that is is encouraged, and and obviously there will be times where you want to throw your columns in the river and then quit everything. You know, there are lots of ups and downs in the first years, but once you've passed this whole this whole uh, I don't know phase, we can yeah. say. Um, I don't. I I haven't heard of any calligrapher that would just quit everything and and, and not come um, back. No, no. And we, and we continue to learn. We continue mm. to visit our teachers regularly. The jazz is only the beginning. This is something that I yes. always insist on. It's definitely not the end. It's yeah. a. It's just the beginning of you as a as a professional calligrapher, but not even a good professional calligrapher. It's meaning this is a. It's a like getting your your university diploma you know you're and at the very beginning of your mm -hmm. life you yep, know and, and then true. you continue learning you continue 
Um, and this is why we, we continue the relationship with our masters. I continue going to Istanbul regularly. Hmm. We continue uh, progressing and until we die, hmm. you see. So this is why I, I, don't, I can't even imagine getting tired of calligraphy hmm. because it's, it's such a notion and you, you never feel like you've touched the bottom. You know, hmm. you're always discovering new things. And yeah. it's one of the mysteries of calligraphy is that... Uh, Maybe you've written a letter, you know, like the letter wow for, I don't know, a million times. And all of a sudden you find something new that you hadn't seen before, you know. And this is really incredible, you know, the, the, the fact that it's so uh, incredibly rich, mm -hmm. you know. And it's, it's like you lift one layer, then you lift another layer, then you lift another layer. And it doesn't ever seem to end. So this is why the challenge is always there. And this is why you can't really get tired of it, you know, because there's always this challenge and this sort of, uh, this sort of uh, the prototypes, you know, the, this very beautiful prototypes that you have in your mind's eye or that you see in the great masterworks yeah. are always there encouraging you to, to try to write in this the most beautiful way, to try to find a, a new way of writing something that has been written many times before. Mm. Because as cal classical calligraphers, we are creating new pieces, even if they're in the sort of classical canons, we're still... Um, creating yeah. and this is something a bit difficult to understand by the the by the audiences who haven't done calligraphy because for them everything looks the same you know a calligraph a classical piece they don't really realize that there's a lot of creation involved you know and it's I always give a little bit the, the analogy of ballet you know the classical dance so in ballet obviously you're going to learn all these classical steps and so on but then you can create a new choreography, which is completely classical, but it's a new choreography. So mm -hmm. in calligraphy, it's the same. You're learning all these classical um, rules of proportion, of harmony, of the letters that you can elongate, the ones that you don't elongate, and so on. And then you're trying to combine all these elements in a new composition, which is still uh, extremely classical and harmonious. Thank you. So you have you ever found something that you could like you would like to share that was totally an experience or something that you discovered about yourself or something that was so prominent or conspicuous in your mind mm. something that you can well, share no there there are many things i think i think the practice of any uh, classical art mm. is really a mirror of yourself mm. so precisely because you have to work so much on on these aspects of perseverance and discipline and so on it's really you just see yourself all the time would you, you know? say that you know more of yourself yes 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 mm -hmm. it helps you it helps you to you know when you feel frustrated or when you feel impatient or mm. when you when you're over ambitious or when you you know so many things that really it's like having constantly a mirror mm. of your nafs in front of you yep uh, yeah. And you cannot practice calligraphy without making your nafs sort of calm, <laughs> you know, and, and obviously it's very, yeah. very important. I mm. mean, the, for instance, for modern art, you know, not even modern art, for painting and so on. It's interesting how you, you can find inspiration in your passions, you know. Mm -hmm. So if you're very upset, you can do this painting mm -hmm. that expresses your feelings. Yeah. You know? yeah. Or if you're very happy, you do another painting with color and so on. But calligraphy is completely the opposite. It's basically, you need to put your feelings aside mm. and just ha have calligraphy come and just practice in a complete stable environment. Okay. And I see this, and my husband's also a master calligrapher, Baman Panay, and, and we speak about this often, how the students who are the most stable emotionally and who have the less ups and downs are the ones who finally we see that they get there. You know, mm -hmm. and obviously we, we all have ups and downs in life. <laughs> I mean, it's yeah. obvi obviously it's inevitable, but I mean, it's really, um, we learn how to put aside all these sort of, um, yeah, so the, the ups and downs of the soul, mm -hmm. or we try to at least to be, so calligraphy in a sense, finally becomes a refuge. You know, when you practice the calligraphy is the time where you're putting everything aside, you know, all your worries. You have to, because if not, the column is not going to be steady. Your hand is not going to be steady. You see, so it's it really does become a sort of refuge. Um, yeah, a, a okay. sort of a, a, a protection. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you mentioned your husband. So he's also, um, uh, he teaches also? 
Yes, yes. Oh, mashallah. He's mashallah. An, an Iranian uh, Iranian calligrapher. Oh, wonderful. Um, oh, so you must be discussing calligraphy and all. Yes, that. yes, yes. <laughs> That's yes. nice. Discussing calligraphy That's all nice. the time. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. That's very nice. Yes. So let's like, come to the last part of our um, yes uh, interview. So, so I think. Uh, I would like you to say, is there any other name for uh, what do you call Arabic calligraphy that is in English, but how do you call it in Arabic? Uh, khat, khatat or uh, khatat? Khat from the, the letter. Khat, khat is calligraphy. Okay, khat. Uh, khatat okay. is calligraphy. Is the person calligrapher. Okay. Yes, and khat okay. also means line. Yes. Yeah, so this yeah. is why, um, yeah. Okay. Um, so let me explore you a little bit if you don't mind. <laughs> um, what is the value of gratitude in your life with all what you do? Yani shukar. The, the, the value, the value of, gratitude, of, yeah, of, uh, of uh, graciousness or shukar in your life. Uh, well, I, <laughs> I think it's one of the essential aspects of, of life. No, we need to be grateful for everything we have. And, and I, not necessarily for everybody, but that's why I'm asking. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, uh, yes, no. You I, think, I think that, that it's everybody thanking that uh, what they have? Yeah, well, I, I definitely am very conscious of being grateful okay. for having that's calligraphy and for being able to practice calligraphy. Mm -hmm. And that's something I, mm -hmm. I, I give thanks every day. And mm -hmm. um, to be able to live from calligraphy is a huge blessing, which I never, ever thought I would be able to you know, to earn a living from doing something that I love. Mashallah. And that's um, a huge blessing. So, so yes, I am. I'm uh, extremely conscious of the gratitude element okay, good. in my yeah. life. Yes, yeah. yes. And, and I, I always say to my students that ju just being able to hold a kalam, to have a healthy hand mm. and to have the time and to have the space to, to be able to practice calligraphy as a source for immense gratitude in, in the world we live in. Mm. which is, um, you know, there's so many different factors that, you know, can interrupt everything or bring a lot of disruption. And, and to have that, um, that space, that sacred space of our practice is, is a real blessing. Yeah. Do you think uh, calligraphy can contribute in uh, transformation of uh, differences in any form? Yes, I, I, I think calligraphy can definitely serve a role um, to transmit beauty, no beauty as okay. such, and through this beauty, uh, anyone can can become more aware of the other, no, and of a, a different culture, a, a different understanding, and so on. So um, we see this all the time um, here in Europe, you know, when we give workshops on calligraphy and so on. How we have people from all walks of life, mm -hmm. from very very different backgrounds, and um, you know, they're they open to you. They are and open they come to you, together obviously. through the mm -hmm. yes, they come mm -hmm. together through the beauty of calligraphy, and they're very attracted to the uh, also to the tradition, uh, to the traditional materials, to the traditional practice. Mm -hmm. uh, so definitely, yeah, mm -hmm. like any art, you know, yeah. it's always a universal vehicle for for yeah. for dialogue and for yeah. understanding. So, do they discuss about? Uh, uh, other topics other than while they are learning or they do they explore from uh, want to explore more about the this hut and the the tradition or anything does that happen to you or do you try to keep it focused yes yeah well i mean this depends on the country you're in because <laughs> okay. i give workshops in many different countries and every culture is different do so you come to u.s it? I've, I've been to the U.S., but to, to be honest, I studied in the U.S. and mm -hmm. I, I gave some workshops at the time, but I, and about three years ago, but I haven't been recently. Um, okay. But, um, but in Europe and then, for instance, London is very different from Paris yeah. uh, and Madrid is very different as well. You see, so every, mm -hmm. every culture has its own mm -hmm. sensitivities. Yes. You know, France is a very sort of secular country, mm -hmm. so um, things have to be sort of focused in a different way. Yeah. Uh, in London, I find uh, in general the society is much more open. Mm -hmm. So really, it, it really depends on the group of people. Now yeah. I'm going to go to the, this question that which country do you like to work in? Or which where you are more comfortable? 
Are you are you not going to take a, a side of any country? <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, I must say, I must say that I, I love being in Istanbul because that's where my teachers are, and that's okay. where I learned, and that's where my heart is. You yeah. know, yeah. Um, I also love Iran very much okay. because of my husband and because okay. of the tradition and the mm. beauty of the mm. arts and. Mm. A beautiful, beautiful uh, yeah. country, beautiful people. Yes. So, and then Spain, because those are my, my roots, you know. Yeah, so, definitely. but I, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a bit of a, a nomad. Yes, <laughs> and, yes. And happy, happy everywhere where we yeah, can. Marshall. Have you been I to Pakistan? With time, oh, with sorry. time we. Go sorry. ahead. Go ahead. No, no, I know go that ahead. With time, we, we become, or at least I become less attached to the particular place, you know, mm. and, and you, you connect more with the people. Uh, Okay. Uh, yeah, and transnational. So yes, that's what yeah. happens. <laughs> what is the ratio of gender in learning? Are there more men or more women uh, who learn the calligraphy? So in in the calligraphy classes in Turkey or Iran or even in the Arab world, we find actually there are many more women studying than men. Um, even though both obviously are, are interested in the art. However, when we come to the professional level of prof when I say professional is um, calligraphers who earn a living from their calligraphy, we have many more men than women. Um, and why is and that? And this is, I've thought a lot about this because when you look at other arts of the book, like illumination, for instance, there are Nowadays, there are more women than men as students and professionally as well. So when it comes to illumination, there's not this change. Mm. And the, however, in calligraphy, yes. And I think maybe one of the reasons is that calligraphy uh, demands so much time and sort of steady practice uh, and so much more time to become professional and to be able to reach a level that is worthy of being sold as a, as a work of art and so on, you know, that with, you know, uh, being mothers and having to take care of the family and mm -hmm. so on, it does become more difficult. Okay. I think that's the only explanation that I can find because mm -hmm. we have many women calligraphers throughout mm -hmm. history, mm -hmm. but many of them, for instance, they were, they didn't sign their work. They were anonymous. Yep. Sometimes they sign their work as men, <laughs> which happens everywhere in like the world. Just like many other stuff, yeah. <laughs> yes, and, mm -hmm. but you know, the, the, there's, in the silsila of calligraphy between two very famous calligraphers, I think it was Ibn Mukla and, and Ibn Bawab, there's one woman, uh, Zainab uh, Shohda al-Katiba, who, mm -hmm. you know, she's the link in the chain of transmission. Mashallah. And today in Istanbul, there are some very, very, very uh, uh, excellent women calligraphers in Iran as well, in Egypt, in uh, mm. Kuwait, and in different parts of the Muslim world. We we have, I would say, a small group that is growing slowly mm. of, of professional women calligraphers who earn a living from doing their calligraphy. Okay. But it's it's true that it's not the majority, and it's um, a small percentage mm -hmm. still. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Through calligraphy, I think one can... Um, because we learn so much about ourselves, it does help us in, a, in our spiritual life and in, in a relationship to the sacred and to the divine. So, nice. Yes. Nice. Mm. Thank you. Any message of hope? Hope for? For uh, the world, for your generation, you are younger, <laughs> for younger generation. Any, any message of hope that I'm you would I'm not so think? young, I'm not so young. Um, For me, I, you are. <laughs> I'm older than you. <laughs> no, um, I think it's very easy to become hopeless yes, in okay. this world. No, mm. because we, yeah. we live in this age where things seem to be getting uh, worse Crazy. and yeah. and very um, unpredictable. Mm. And I Talk find myself that. sometimes saying, "My goodness, you know what? You know, there's all these fake news." And I mean, it, it really, we live in in very convoluted times. Yes. However, at the same time, we have things uh, like calligraphy or like other beautiful arts, you know, like uh, illumination or, or dance or music. Or I mean, uh, we live in a time where we have much more access than we did before to many different cultures, many different world religions, many different expressions of beauty and truth. So it's true that 
you know, they go hand in hand. At the one time we have too much information, but on the other hand, we have access to things that were not so easy to access before. So maybe the difficulty lies in navigating all of this and finding the right teachers and, and the right models. Hmm. But once we do, um, it's a great blessing. So I think, I think there's hope. <laughs> okay. So you are always hopeful. Yeah, well, I okay. try to be. I try okay. to be. Yes, I think we, we have to live a little bit in the present, mm -hmm. concentrate on the blessings we have, which are many, many. Any message for the young generation? For or the young generation, I, 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 this is going to sound a bit cliche, but um, to, to try to learn an art which they produce with their hands, I think it's extremely grounding. And to avoid technology, at least for part of their lives, um, to maybe they will have to use it in their studies and so on, but to be able to have something in their life which is, has, doesn't have technology and which involves you know, the mind, the hand, the creative process, I think... It's extremely therapeutic and very important. Thank you for saying that. That is important because nowadays people don't have forgotten, the younger generation has forgotten yes. to even write. Yes, literally yes, write. that's why. And that's that is why. Uh, quite... Uh, with hands, you know, yeah. I think it is quite, quite important. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Anything else you would like to share before I ask you my last question, as I ask everyone? No, no. Okay. <laughs> last question. <laughs> My last question, that is the, the podcast question, which is, what lights you up? Oh, what lights you up? Calligraphy. Oh, <laughs> mashallah. Okay. <laughs> what lights you up? Huh? <laughs> okay, say it again. What lights you up, Nuria? <laughs> calligraphy. <laughs> mashallah. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you so much. Really appreciate oh. that. No, thank you. Thank you.